YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Wait. Before you go, please make sure that you follow the channel, like the video, drop a comment, and ring the bell icon, all the YouTube buzzwords. Today, we are continuing my crusade of finding interesting ways to use VSTs to process my microphone outside of a DAW or my guitar. In this case, today we are checking out Pedalboard 2. We're going to talk about how I set it up. We're going to talk about some of the quirks. And uh, yeah, we're going to jump on into it right now. Let's get to it. Okay, so I actually have all of the plugin windows opened up first. I'm going to talk about it visually this way, and then I'll show you what the program actually looks like right behind it. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So my microphone is going to a gate by Reaper and then into a de by Waves, then into a compressor by Waves, into L1 by Waves, uh, and then that goes into a switch. So this switch is actually included inside the program. Uh, it is toggleable by MIDI. I'm using my pacer foot controller, so if I'm talking to you like this, it's fine. You can see as soon as I press the button, it'll switch sides, and then suddenly I have reverb on my voice. This is actually one of the more exciting parts about this particular program for me. Uh, that was a little more difficult to set up in Cubase, if I'm being honest with you. This made it a lot easier to do, which I'm a huge fan of. So if it's going to the left channel, it goes straight out into L1 again, which is acting more like a clipper here, uh, just reducing everything by negative 0.3. And then that goes out to what I hear or to re-stream. Uh, <laughs> which is then routing out into OBS, and that is how you're hearing me. Uh, when it goes down to B channel, it goes to Little Plate by uh, whoever the hell that is. <laughs> Sound Toys. Uh, and then it has its own volume mixer here. And that's just lowering the volume so it doesn't get crazy. And then from the volume mixer out, it goes into L1. Same settings as I was just talking about here. Uh, and then for guitar, it's basically the same concept. My guitar input goes into guitar rig six and then that's going out to an output and then that goes from that output out to l1 and again l1 is the big one that controls where the volume goes where the output goes i apologize so here's my guitar cool right so some of the quirks This program only recognizes VST2s. This program is no longer in development. The original developer outright says it on their website, which I'll include down below. Uh, getting this particular program was a little finicky for me. It didn't work whenever I clicked the download link. I actually had to open in a new window and then highlight the address and hit enter, and then it started the download. So that was a little frustrating, uh, but I don't know if that's just my experience with Google Chrome or what happened with that. So regardless, um, so that's the reason why I'm using some of the programs that I'm using today. I don't have that many VST2s installed on my computer. Uh, I typically use VST3. So, you know, it is what it is. So let me show you what it looks like here. Get all these closed out real quick. All right. So. I went ahead and told to only look for my first four inputs. My microphone is actually on input three. My guitar is on input four. You can change that however you'd like to. Um, I've got MIDI here, and that's how I'm controlling uh, things with my pacer. So you can see whenever I press the button, it changes here. Same as before. Uh, so yeah, and then it goes... One of the other quirks, the reason why I wanted to show you this is setting these up is a little bit problematic sometimes. Um, you can highlight them by left clicking and then you can press the delete or backspace key. Uh, and then you have to actually click very small. I'm using a 1440p monitor. This program is clearly not designed for 1440p or higher. I imagine this would be even worse if you got a 4K monitor. Um, so yeah, from there, I just click and drag to create new ones. If you miss it by even a little bit, it'll actually just not create the pathway. So like it magnetizes, but if you accidentally move just even a little beyond it to where it's not magnetized, it won't create it. So you just gotta make sure that it actually clicks through and does its thing. Other than that, it's a very simple program to use. I, I kind of am excited about how easy it is to set up certain things, certain aspects of this. Um, 
unfortunately, this will not go directly into uh, an input channel. There's no way to set that up. So you would still need to follow what I mentioned in an earlier video about running a separate plugin host or DAW, whether that's Reaver or Cakewalk, since it's free. Uh, if you use Cakewalk, then you can just set up uh, Reastream inside Cakewalk and then have Cakewalk output to cable output, which is how I get my stuff usually into OBS. I'm not doing that today because I just loaded up a channel on OBS and it happens to be working with Reastream. It's playing nicely today. <laughs> uh, but regardless, you have a bunch of options available to you. So if you dig that and you think it's cool, I hope that you found this helpful. If you want me to try to do other things with it, please feel free to let me know in a comment down below. I'll happily do some more, uh, some more exploring. So I hope this was informational for you. I hope this was helpful for you. That's what I meant to say. And uh, if you dig this content or any other content, be sure to follow my Twitch. A lot of this stuff happens in real time. This video did not, um, but a lot of other ones do. I hope to see you all there. See ya.